Sounds great, doesn't it? Having your own private beach getaway. But I'm told you need to use your head, not your heart, because investing in a beach house can actually be quite tricky. An hour's drive from Melbourne is the popular Mornington Peninsula. Here, beach houses differ significantly in price, so I'm interested in taking a look at both ends of the market. So Michelle, we're here in Rosebud, which is a more affordable part of the beach house market. And this house is a bit of a time capsule, right, from the 1960s. So how's it going on the market so far? Yeah, really good. I mean, it's an original property, but um, you know, it's a great place here in Rosebud and people are buying and selling regularly. Named after a famous shipwreck, Rosebud feels less like a holiday retreat and more like a city suburb. But lower prices combined with beach proximity make it a great place for those on a budget. It's a busy time down here. Um, everyone comes down here for the summer and we had quite a lot of auctions last weekend and um, majority of them sold, so it's booming as such. So people's eyes kind of light up over the summer break and then uh, all of a sudden it's making hay while the sun That's shines. That's right, everyone wants to come down here and buy something, which is great. Property advisor Ben Kingsley has had plenty of experience with clients keen to purchase holiday homes. We always buy with our hearts instead of our heads when it comes to property. We need to stop and think rationally about what we're trying to achieve here. If we're trying to achieve a lifestyle choice, then maybe consider it. But if we're trying to achieve a return on investment, then let's hold back. Priced somewhere in the mid 400s, this place represents more the entry level side of this Mornington Peninsula beach house market. As you can see, it's pretty much unchanged in a few decades, which for a lot of buyers represents a great opportunity. But what do you really need to know before you take on a place like this? There is obviously going to be maintenance on those types of properties and I'd like to deploy capital in a bigger city where I get ultimately better returns and those returns use that money to go and rent that beach house. For something with more of a holiday feel, a 15 minute drive away is peaceful rye, where beach houses nestle amongst native vegetation. Coastal properties like this one can easily go for over $850,000, but it really does feel like a beach house, and have a look at what you get for your money. So it's five bedrooms, two bathrooms, one and a half living areas. But I think the real standout is that you've got the second living downstairs you can do whatever you like with, really. Do you find that a lot of these people who are buying these sorts of holiday homes are getting involved in the Airbnbs and the stays type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of our buyers down this way are buying a nice holiday home and then while they're not using the property, really taking advantage of the holiday rental market. So ultimately, this is going to be a second principal property for them. So they're going to have to look at the additional costs associated with that. There may be land tax, you've also got the rates and the maintenance to maintain that property. So as long as you're doing your budget well and you can afford it for the medium term and ultimately your plans are to get there for the longer term, it can stack up. So it all depends what you want to get out of your beach house. If you're looking for an investment, it might be better to buy something in the city rather than a small place down the beach. However, if you can stretch yourself to more bedrooms down the coast, the short-term rental market might treat you pretty well. Plus, you can use the place yourself in the off-season. Best thing to do, talk to an advisor before jumping in the deep end. <laughs>